the last of the tutorial on infection diseases af affecting Africa. Although we have so many diseases affecting Africa, but we choose these diseases because we feel that they have more infection cases in Africa. So today we are going to talk about cholera disease. So cholera disease is more of like a bacterial disease that contaminates foods and water. So when it the, causes diarrhea disease, where human takes the food that is contaminated, doesn't become, become infectious. Although it can cause epidemics in poor certain countries, it can spread from to the high income country due to transfer of food products or human transfer boundaries. Cholera disease affects both children and adults and increase within hours if it's not treated immediately. Because as someone that infected, the person can be dehydrated, which can lead to so many complications. Now, there's organism causing this cholera, and one of them is Tosigic um, Barbio cholera, which is 01, and Directive Barbio cholera, which is 0139. This cholera is mostly found in a blackish water as a natural habitat. So this is like a sign of where you see this cholera. This is this kind of environment will have a tendency of having an outbreak of cholera. And it can affect a lot of things. And most times it happens where people don't have access to water, potable water to drink, and where they go to get water from the stream. And sometimes the water is being infected. Then someone can contact the disease by consumption of contaminated food or water. The food can be a raw fruit, vegetable, sausage, or wet water. It can be also seafood and greens. So when you come to Korea, they have Korea is one of the diseases that has affects so many people. Like it was estimated that 2.8 million infections happens yearly, with 95 deaths every year. And in 2021, it was reported by WHO like 1.3 to 4 million cases of cholera worldwide, involving 17 countries in Africa. And these 17 and seven out of this country, they have seven countries contribute to 80% of the cholera cases. One comes from Central Africa. We have one comes from East Africa. Then there is South America. There is also Middle East and Asia too. Although Korea has been reported in the US. Now, this is a, a case of Korea it, um, cases in, uh, in Africa. This is Africa where Korea has been infected. If you look at this map we have here, this is map of Africa. This is the cases of Korea in Africa. We see that the brownish one is where the Korea is more infectious, more endemic, and which Nigeria is part of it, where it comes from. It's also affecting other countries, but it's not as much as what you see in Nigeria. Now, when you come between 1917 to 19, now to, between 1970 to 2021, we see there, this is the case of predatory of Korea outbreak. And we notice that it's more in, in 2010 than 2021 to also have it there, maybe due to outbreak of COVID. Now, there are so many symptoms of cholera, which can, although someone that is infected can be asymptomatic, can also be symptomatic infected. So it can also have, it can cause, one of the symptoms is dehydration, it can be still elasticity loss, it can be nozzle cramp, it can be low blood pressure, it can be diarrhea, vomiting. These are the symptoms of cholera. Now, we have incubation of 12 hours to five days. So 12 hours, person is enough to come out of incubation and become infectious, which can affect so many people. Now, the most aspect of cholera is that someone that does, does, does not show the symptoms will continue to shed this bacteria in the environment after for one to 10 days after infection, without knowing that being infected. And when someone is infected with cholera and is not treated, it can also cause a tendency to cause an outbreak in the community. So the transmission of cholera can be in two ways because since it's contact through the contaminated food and water, there's environment to human 
fast way. That's someone can get infected when you eat food, things that are contaminated with cholera. So, and also someone can get infected through human to human, most especially in the hospital settings or maybe in the household. When someone is infected in the household, there is tendency, everybody in the house is already exposed to that disease. Any of this disease, any of this pathway can only be caused by Oka oral route. That's through what we take into our mouth, our body. But woman to woman transmission cannot explain why cholera outbreak results to so many deaths within hours. So that means there may be tendency of woman to woman transmission, not just environment to woman transmission. There are so many factors that contribute to this. One of those factors, social economic factor, can be overcrowding, poverty, poor hygiene, poor sanitation. Because when there, are, especially when there is a camp and there is outbreak of cholera in that camp, there is tendency that maybe we can cause that break within that camp too. And poor hygiene too can also cause that because if the food is not taken care of, it can also cause that. There are those that this factor of this cholera. One of them is overcrowding camps, especially people that are internally displaced or refugees too. Also, one of another thing that can contribute is poor sanitation when the environment person that persons are not taking care of their environment too. Another has uh, limited access to portable drinking water. If there is not enough water to drink, clean water, any water available can be contaminated with cholera too. The climate change, when there is flooding, it can carry the bacteria out to the human environment too. It can cause that. The other risk factor is people that are of type blood O. People that have a blood group of O, they are, they are at risk of contacting cholera than maybe other person of another type. Then raw uncooked food is also part of it. Then household exposure. Of course, someone that is infected in the house, everybody in that house is already exposed to that Korea, if someone is infected. Then armed conflicts, when there is armed conflict, which can also displace people, it can also cause uh, people to, can also cause the, um, those people are at risk of the cholera because in order to live where they are, they can, if there is outbreak in wherever they are, it can, it can generate to the whole population. Now, when you come to Korea, because it's a bacteria, Korea is treated with Antibiotics is given, especially when it's very when it's uh, very serious. They give IV antibiotic, and also they can also give for children. They give zinc tablets for children under five because most times it causes diarrhea and vomiting, so making someone to dehydrate. So they give something to rehydrate the person. So now everyone is susceptible to cholera except the infants. Because a mother that have had cholera before, the infant gets immunity from the nursing mother that have already recovered from cholera. So, now, there are so many prevention of, and control of cholera, which is community engagement. This community engagement has to do with like cultural practice, like practicing like washing of hands, prepare, safe preparation and storage of food, and disposing of pieces of children, Sometimes very hard practices for someone that died of cholera. Then another sanitation is water and sanitation. Another intervention is water and sanitation interventions. This is where wash. Wash has to do with water, sanitation, and hygiene. That is where it comes for cholera, which is also within the sustainable development goals that was listed out. So that is another intervention. The surveillance, because surveillance is like treating the disease surveillance is most to be prepared against any rapid or respond to any outbreak in affected area. For example, when there is outbreak in another place, neighboring um, area to that place will be prepared in case of any outbreak coming up. There's also oral cholera vaccine. There is a vaccine that was given, prepared and um, pre-qualified vaccine. There are three types. Those vaccines are, are required to be given two doses for full protection. The two doses of them protect for two years. Why two doses of them? There is one that can protect for at least three years. Why small one dose only protect for small short time protest, especially travelers that travel to area where there is outbreak of cholera. That one dose is enough to protect them within a short period of time. Now there is another WHO response to cholera. There is another 
response they have, a goal they have by 2013, that 90% of cholera they will reduce cholera deaths by 90%. So they are working with that with some multi sector approach to make that to be achieved. Now, from what we have seen in the background of cholera, there are a lot of work in mathematical models of cholera, applying mathematical skills to cholera. But the first mathematical model started in 1973. That was by Capuzzo and his colleague who published the PET model. And it's a differential, it's a differential equation of two systems where one has to do with bacteria and the other one has to do with infected woman. So they try to look at sewage carrying the, vocal, the, the cholera directly into the sea. They try to look at the dynamics. But in that work, they neglect the consumption of food. They just try to look at the sea, they neglect the consumption of food. Then in 2001, their work was extended by Kodiko. He extended the work by including a sustainable population, not just infected. So it becomes a sustainable population and infected bacteria. This is the sample of their work. Now in their work also, they consider the bacteria supposed to have a half-life, which is by carrying capacity of the bacteria in the environment in order to, because that makes the, whether the bacteria will stay in the environment or not. So in their model, they consider three parts in their model. They try to look at epidemic and endemic of cholera. They try to simulate cholera-free epidemic and endemic situation. They also use it to, to, exam, to simulate possible causes of ep endemic oscillation, that is infiltration of uh, cholera in an environment. So after their model, there have been so many extensions of the model. When it comes to Korea mathematical model, there are three basic models that comes up. That is a, the, the 14 and 15 and 16 are always the first basic model that comes up in Korea using mathematical model. So in reference 16, uh, Hartley et al. They extend the work by 15 in two ways. What they consider is that they try to divide the bacteria into two subpopulations hyperinfectious of the bacteria. So they try to hyperinfectious and the one that is not hyperinfectious in our model to see how it can con concentrate in the bacteria in the environment. So after then, so many work have considered that. Some work have also considered very helpless, not just bacteria. They try to look at, and for example, we look at uh, the model we have there. Most of these models do not consider human to human transmission. So reference 17 now consider a situation where a human can transfer the disease to, um, to another human, also consider indirect transmission. Indirect transmission is from environment to consumption of food. So in their model, they also consider using a half-life, that's carrying capacity of the bacteria in the environment, as you see in um, 15 and 16. Just in a tone, now look at another dimension of cholera. You can look at the importance of plant prediction to the epidemic cause of cholera by developing a model. So in this case, not just the bacteria, is also looking at plague and the epidemic, epidemiology of cholera. So they try to look at the condition at which this plague can infect the epidemic cause. They, they try, divided the human population into susceptible and infected zones. So we have different models that have considered so many things about the SRR model with the bacteria. Then we also have a, a work done by Yam and Wang. They have done a lot of work in Korea. When, when you look at the references about the work in Korea, they have done a lot of work in Korea. So they try to look at quadratic growth. They want to look at the bacteria, the growth of the bacteria, when is a quadratic and when is a cubic growth, um, um, growth model with early effects in the pathogen evaluation equation. What they try to do is to know the impact of waterborne disease transmission. Of course, the, what they do there is that they, they consider a mass action for both direct and indirect infection rates, both for the environment and human population. So after that, we say, I have a lot of model going on heterogeneous models. They're looking at spectral and temporal heterogeneous model, which they have to divide the region the model based in different region. So one of them is that they drum et al. develop a SIE mod group Korea model. Where they look at interaction among the multiple transmission pathways of Korea and interaction between 
within group and intergroup dynamics. So what they do here is that they have a different group of different group and group of people, regions, where they partition them. Each of these groups have sustainable class, they have infected, they have recovery. And each of them also have their own different battery. I don't like having in a community, looking at different regions within the community or within a particular place. So we try to study the Korea dynamic because most times when there is an outbreak, there is tendency that another region that is close there, there is tendency there will be also outbreak that is not controlled in that present, present um, community. Then after that, we have Richard Ford and Wang. They also present a multi group muscular model to investigate Korea transmission. Now they try to look at heterogeneous environments. So what happened here, of course, each group is an SIR compartmented, compart compartment with direct and indirect transmission routes. So they try to also start look at in-host dynamics coupled with environment. So what happened here is that they have three different groups. They have SIR more, which has to do with the human population. They also study the in-host, in within host dynamics of the, the bacteria. They also study the environment, environmental equation. So it was like a three different sub coming together in the system of um, OD, the system of the differential equation. Then after they have looked at that, they look at it where they have a model that have multiple parts, which we have in 23. They look at multiple parts of uh, impacts of asymptomatic infected person in the dynamics of non-homogeneous periodic environment. They also use SIE um, SIRB, multiple parts. So what you have, they have M parts, but they try to look at their infected people here are divided into two different ways. They have a uh, Asymptomatic and asymptomatic infected. Then in different regions, this is not this is different from the reference 21 because here they look at the people that is not yet showing symptoms, the effect in different regions of the where there is outbreak of cholera. So after they look at it, they are still work on the bacteria hyperfertility. They want to look at the bacteria, the, the a hyperfertility of the bacteria. So they try to look at they look at the concentration of hyperinfections and low infection state of the chloride in the water. So it's just like there is a, where is more infectious and where is low infect, infect, infections. They try to study that, but also is also in a heterogeneous um, model. They consider that in their model. So there also have been different types of model looking at how to control the disease. The disease have been there for long. And they try to look at how can we control this disease. So the, some of the model also consider implementing controls. And one of them is that consider um, quarantine, the quarantine in their model. So instead of they look at where the people that is infected is isolated. So, and but in their model, they only assume that they only consider direct indirect infection, that someone can get infected only through the bacteria. So the so the 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 infected people are, are assumed to be subject to quarantine during their treatment period so that they can have access to people. So the ultimate control of the ultimate control model have also considered like impact of education programs in the disease transmission rate and also water sanitation and environmental compact um, pathogen dynamics. So there have been so many models going on in control. There also have been a mixed model that consider OD and PDE. In this case, what they try to look at here is the vaccination age culture, imperfect vaccination and asymptomatic infected. So what happened here in the PDE, that is partial differential equation, they describe the vaccination population. They use it to describe the vaccination population where it depends on age and time. Why the OD, we also look at the human population and the bacteria compartment. So in their work, they divided, they have their infected and asymptomatic infected subpopulations in their work. They use that to simulate their model and come up with the results. So also optimal control also have considered, now in most of these models, they do not consider partial immunity because we know that someone that have, it, that have recovered from cholera also have the tendency of becoming infected again. So the work done by behind reference to it, it consider where somebody has a partial immunity for recovery. So you also consider some control strategy, which is treatment and sanitation too. So their work was also prioritized using data from Ethiopia. 
to, and they use it to also consider what are the cost effectiveness of those control, right? Treatment and sign, what are their costs in implementing there? Which of them will give a better result? So, so many work have been done. This also three workers we see how to consider age culture where there is a vaccine, consider age in vaccine, also consider water sanitation strategies because most times water carries this bacteria. So apart from the, the ultimate control, we also have multi-scale dynamics. There are some other model that I've also consider. This has to do with uh, more especially, it has to do with the Francis Markov jump process. In this work, they put they, they look at within host mathematical model for Korea dynamics or the concentration of virus. So what happened here is that they have their B. The B here has to represent the concentration of the environmental, uh, the one that has to do with low, low um infective, the low infectivity of the corona in the environment. Why the Z has to do with the high infectivity of the corona in the environment. So why the V represent the viral concentration of the virus? So they try to use the study the in-host model here. Of course, this is the recruitment rate, that's influence rate of the bacteria. So they also use the saturation force function for the bacteria transmission between the virus. So this is our K. So they have the this like the death, like the donate like the death rate or uh, like decay rate of the bacteria in the environment which can also be the decay rate of the virus in the environment for theta three. So they study this model to look at the in-host model. Now, apart from studying the, the, the ordinary differential, the, the deterministic aspect of this model, also look at the stasis aspect of it, using Markov jump process to study that, which is also giving us this table that we have here, how each of these process work from one, from one process to another. So from the work they have done, a lot of work I've also considered the in-host multi-scale uh, Korea dynamics that has to do with within host and within, with, within host and between host population, and also with new system too. Like the, the reference 31 also consider host immunity, that host immune cells, they consider environmental evolution of the Korea they also consider within host dynamics, also would consider, okay, between host dynamics. Between host dynamics has to do with SIR1, which is human compartment. So they consider the within host, what height, height goes within the human body, which includes both the host immunity, host immune cells. They also consider the environment, which is also, also a differential equation. So they try to look at, their, they analyze their model in three different scales. One of them is a fast case within within host because this within host happen within several hours to a few days. Of course, we say within 12 to five days. They also look at intermediate scale for human hosts, which happen weeks to uh, months. Then they look at the low scale for environmental evolution, which takes place in years and decades. It's the assumption that interaction between the human to bacteria is bi um, bilinear. That is a mass action form of force of infection. So after then we also have SRR model, which is also considered in by one and one reference 32. They try to also look at within host model dynamics. They also try to look at uh, between host too for human compartments. So it's like combined um, between and within and also environment in that. But one thing that different from their work is that they consider saturation force for saturation function for the indirect transmission. They also consider the women immunity for infected people that recover. Then they use the bilinear function for direct transmission, which also depends on the concentration in the human body and the shedding rate that depends on the human. So one thing with their model, the shedding rate that comes, the shedding of the bacteria in the environment depends on what the bacteria the human has in the environment. So not a constant, it was not a constant uh, parameter. So we have the reference 34, 33, which also consider the same thing like uh, within host, in between host, and the host immune response within the human body. It's so where they consider both. Now, one thing about this particular work done by Kai, they consider infection rates. They also consider vaccination rates. 
with the sh rates of shading it in the environment. So the shading rate, the shading rates also depend on the age, is the age dependent on shading rate because they try to look at the age when someone is shading. Is it the same as a, a young person and an adult? So that's what they consider in their work. So these are the models for so far, these are the models that we pick up. There are a lot of models on Korea and they see a lot of work going on on Korea. So they're still open for more research on Korea disease. And one of them is like, consider one of them is like seasonal um, variation factors. Although some work have considered that, but we're looking at a situation where rainfall, like variation factors like rainfall, monsoon, flood, water temperature, how it can come in a spectral temporal model, not just ordinary differential equation, a model like more of a multiscalar model. They also look at, say, okay, in a multiscalar model, considering the bacteria, bacteria graduate to the environmental function, so like the function of the, the virus that, the bacteria that, the virus like of the bacteria. There also another, some intervention that can also consider maybe in terms of optimal control model, vaccination, water, water sanitation, hydration therapy and antibiotic treatment. So this can be considered also in a spectral temporal model as an optimal control model. So there's a possibility of different ways of defining the host group. So once there's a possibility, okay, because this color affects both all ages, but does it mean that it does, age, does it have effect in the, in the transmission of color? That is another thing that we can look at. Also, we can also look at gender. Does it have effect on it? For example, say that a, a nursing mother pass immunity to a child. So we also, also look at the health conditions too, because sometimes health condition can also make it worse, someone that has cholera too. So also another thing to consider is location. Most times it happens in a, a low resources uh, um, areas too. So we have to also look at location when we are modeling. It's not all the models that can work in, in all these locations. That location has to also play into the development of a mathematical model of Korea. Yeah, another thing we can look at also is like, another further thing can be looked at also is a multiple scale partial differential equation modeling approach, not ordinary differential equation, where the spectral dynamics are represented by partial differential equation system. Then another, Interesting area to look at agent based model. The agent based model techniques for within host and between host dynamics of cholera. That will also be very good too. So, we look at, they are also possible to look at within and between host model, deterministic and stochastic model that try to look at it, compare the two, a, a work that will compare the two and see what the result is like. That is also very good to consider. So, there are so many things that can be done within Korea, then there's also possibility because the way Korea is also affected, there's a possibility that Korea can also have a co-infection with typhoid because they also pass, they also have the, the same way route of transmission where someone can get infected. So those are the part of the work that can also, there's also bacterial disease that can also look at their co-infections, how it can be taken care of. So this is what we have for Korea. But there's also, there's also possible another possibility of research going on on products. So another one is the lifestyle, which we have already talked about. Sustainability, we are looking at the level of sustainability within human homes, because some people may be susceptible to disease. For example, now, someone that has cholera in the house, everybody is already exposed to that person. So that will also be very good to consider too. So those are the further research possibility in cholera. Now we the last disease we want to look at is cryptococcus, cryptococcus disease. So cryptococcus disease, we are picking up this disease because from all the disease we are looking at, they either belong to any of these virus, bacteria, they all belong to parasites, they all belong. So this particular one belongs to fungal disease. So that is why fungal bacteria, so that is why we pick up this disease. So this, what is this disease all about? We see a tree here, yeah? it affects, it's mostly where there is tree. It's always around where there is tree. So, so this, this disease is caused by fungi, fungi from a, a genus called cryptococcus. 
that affects women and animals. It affects both women and animals. Please, sorry for my pronunciation of the disease. It affects women and animals, and is also usually inhaled by the people that live around that area. It also results in lung, lung infection. It can also spread to brain. Causes a uh, some causes a um, disease in human body. So it is second leading invasion fungal infection for, for public health concern. Because why is it like? Because it has to do with immunity. It has to do with immunity of someone. So immune compromise and healthy, healthy person. So it's prevalence in people that is healthy and people that their immunity is already compromised. For example, people that has HIV. So there are many species of this particular disease. CSS, but there is two of what that is most common, and one of them is the one that has to do with ne ne no femurs, which we call a C no femur. Then the one that has to do with gite, which is still gite, there's most common that causes infection. Now, in most of them, they are caused by one of them is called by decay wounds. There's wounds that is decay. You can easily see the in the environment where there's wound that is decay if it's in that environment. The other one is causes by bags, excretes of bear, especially the pigeon, old pigeon feces that is in the environment can also be where there is a lot of them. So it affects animals, especially cats, but it's also occurring dogs, horses, and cattle, sheep. It also also occurs in white animals. Now, is it defined as a portionist in infection for HIV people because it affects their, of course, because due to HIV, it's also because of their immune system. So they are, they are at risk of that infection. So it's very, also is one of the things that is very responsible for fungal meningitis in sub-Saharan Africa. Now, there are, of course, I say there are two main of this organism. So the one of them is found in bear feces, which is new for mouse, it's found in bear feces. But, but usually the bears they don't get sick. They are not infected. So they just keep passing it out in their feces. And the, it makes people to, the weakest people's immune system, because people that have a weakened immune system, they easily get sick about the disease because especially the HIV AIDS patients. Now human and, animals can get infected by inhaling dust, like inhaling dust that contaminated with the best feces. But it cannot be transmitted from human to human or animals to animals. It's just by inhaling that it can be transmitted. So another thing that it also causes infection in the brain, and that is what results to critical meningitis in brain. It also has infection, it affects the lungs too. So in pneumonia, um, aspect of it they affect the lungs. So the other aspect of it, which also started a few years ago, is associated with plants in tropical and subtropical climates. So this has to do with decaying woods. It's fine where the decay woods we affect where the it is. So it's also caused by inhaling to airborne plant materials. So in that case the person gets sick even say it affects people that even have a healthy immune system. So not just HIV, this particular one affects people that is healthy, that have a healthy uh, um, immune system. But it also affects people that has compromised immune system more. Different between the two. So for this particular disease is, is across different regions of Africa and is a uh, reflect the trajectory of HIV because whenever they like where you have the trajectory of HIV in the, a region, there is tendency that this disease also has an impact in that particular area. So this disease in, especially the majorities of it in HIV patients, the every year per year is like 223,100 cases per year. And we 73 out of them are in South Sahara Africa. Go very, of course, you know HIV is associated with majorities. It causes about 188, 1,100 deaths per year, with 75% of it also occur in Africa alone. Meaning that Africa is where it most occur. So this meningitis uh, also accounts for 15% of HIV-related deaths worldwide. The HIV-related deaths worldwide it accounts for the 
account for 15% of it. So in 2022, East Africa, there was a smith in East Africa, Southern Africa, West Africa, and Central Africa, where it affects by a year in 2022. So Nigeria have the highest case of this disease. Oh my, this is my country <laughs> has the highest case of this disease. Why Algeria has the lowest case of this disease, which is 35 case by year. So how does this disease occur? Of course, we say it's by inhaling the heat in the environment into our lungs. That is the primary cause of this disease. Although a spray can either spray by blood or empathic system to the brain. It can spray through blood to the other, other parts of the body. But in lungs, it can be cleared by the body, person's in body immune system. Or it can also contain as a asymptomatic latent state by the person's body system. So it depends on the immune system of the person. It can be clear or it can just remain on the person. The person will not be showing any symptoms. Now, for people that is already immune suppressing con condition, the asymptomatic infected person is, is you will activate it and they may be straight from the brain and causes fatal cryptococcal meningitis to that person. So this is like the biology of this disease. This is like this is like a sign of the plant. This is the plant, and when there is a decay of that plant, and the person, someone inhaled it. When someone inhaled this plant, it goes into the person's body and goes into the lungs and you continue that it can transmit to the blood and gets to the other parts of the body. So these are the, the way it works in the human body. This is the environmental form and this is the host associated form of the way it passes in the person's body. Now, what are the symptoms? The symptoms depends in different types of this disease because we say it can cause pneumonia, crypto, Critococcal pneumonia can also cause the meningitis of form of this. So the, the critical pneumonia has to do with lungs, while the meningitis one has to do with central nervous system. So the one that has to do with lungs can be cough, shortness of breathing, feel like you don't want to catch your breath, chest pain and fever. While the other one also show headache, can show fever, neck pain and stiffness, which may also get to your chest and you can also, also have vomiting, nausea, sensitive to light and confusion and changes in behavior like mental, how to deal with someone's mental too. Now there are other symptoms because we say that there are so many of these organisms but these two are most one that is most popular. So there are other symptoms that you can also be associated with the lungs and you may think of like heart, um, thick leg like rashes, bombs and sores, it can also be there. So now the survival of these people may develop some complications. Deafness, they can develop some complications like deafness, blindness, and memory loss. So that is the survival of this particular disease. Treatments. There have been, is, there have been some anti fugas treatment for this um, disease, which are listed here. Some of them are either toxic or resistance. They also have, uh, there are new ones that also have. So most of these treatments are safe, but most sometimes they are very expensive and unavailable, especially in poor setting where the cases are more. They are unavailable and uh, expensive to assess. And then also availability of antiviral in a HIV patient also help in controlling this disease. When there is availability of antiviral drug for HIV patient, it helps also in controlling the disease. Now, sometimes surgery, also because something can also be to remove the mass, large mass of the of the organism from the person's body. Now there can also be therapy too. So there are still other ways, like apart from the drug, there's still other way, non-pharmatical intervention can also help in controlling this disease. Now, who are those at the risk of this population um, disease? We say HIV, patient with organ transplant, patient on thermography. Patient with um, nu nu uh, leukemia patient too. Patient with having their immune system is already uh, suppressed. Like diabetes, patients with uh, blood cancer, they are at risk of this disease. And complications can also occur, which we have said, blindness, weaknesses in muscles, which control your eyes. Lapses, because lapses mean that someone that, even after taking that, there is lapses, the person can also have that again. Then we'll have immune reconstitution of it. 
which happen mostly with people with HIV. Now, the viral particular infections have to do with the timing of exposure. It has to do with climate change, like for example, temperature and water. It has to also do with the immunological uh, status. Those are the things that drive this uh, disease, to, this infection too. So now, the one of the prevention, the best way to prevent this is not to inhale the organism. But is it possible to stop inhaling the organism, especially when it is in an area where it's common? It becomes difficult for you to avoid inhaling this uh, organism. So one of the ways is like avoid dust that contains any type of bad feces. Like, will you say that someone will put on the mask every time? So those are one of the ways that listed that, which most times is also difficult to achieve that. Then sometimes the control measures can target first the environment, second the human host, and third the therapy. Like if the control measures have to be targeted, you consider the environment, you consider this uh, the human, then consider the therapy too. Then controls any control that can reduce the human to environment interaction will also help and also involves factors too. So we say, well, right now there is no vaccine for this particular disease. There is no vaccine to prevent it, so it still has to do with avoiding contaminated environment. Mathematical models of cryptococcus disease. There is no mathematical model for this disease for now. Most the mathematical model that is here is the experimental model. There is no ODE, differential equation, PDEs, agent-based model. There is no mathematical model yet. The one I can have access to, there is no mathematical model yet on this work. So the work is still open for research to look at how disease, disease can be controlled. Now, one of the model, these are the model that is, has to do with experimental biochemical system theory. They try to look at one of the one of the review done by Sabite et al. He reviewed so many works on this model based in experimental model, which is very good for a further research because from this uh, review, you look at the uh, they look at so many work that have been done in exper experimental models. And most times they come from biochemical system of theory. They try to look at different category of, look at the cause of infection, the inversion of the infection in cellular, cellular bacteria, look at the interaction with, with the immune system. So there will be a lot of work in that paper and which can be a, a further thing to look at how to model this uh, particular disease. So for yet now, no mathematical model of this particular disease. Of course, I say that review and um, the reference for TCs provide evolution of how different experimental model, and this can help research on this particular disease, and it can also help in developing novel mathematical model for critical reasons. So this is the work we have done. I have done so far in this work. Then we we'll have so many references attached to it. So. This is all I have today. Thank you for listening and thank you for being part of this tutorial. Also want to thank Fields for the opportunity to give this tutorial. Also want to thank Professor Jane, who is my host, for giving me the opportunity to present this tutorial on fashion diseases affecting Africa's African continent. So we pray that this will help in heading research that will help African countries to come overcome the disease affecting them. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and thank you to uh, Dr. Chinwendu for giving such a comprehensive overview of all of these diseases and the modeling that has been done associated with them and highlighting where modeling needs to be done uh, to tackle public health questions and med medical questions for these diseases that are affecting Africa.